Okay, y'all, it's part two. Let's go to get to the next question. This is from Cata, Catalee 033 or 033. She says, hello, Tanya. My question is, how old were you when you had your son? And do you wish you had more children? Thanks and God bless. So, hey, this question is a segue right into the last question I answered on part one. So, first question for part two. Um, I had my son at 16. And do I wish I had had more children? Um, I thought about it, but I didn't have a desire to have any more children. Hope that makes sense. Um, I've been in three major relationships in my 51 years. And my second major relationship, um... We were very close and we we had discussed it and came pretty close to perhaps trying to plan for that. But again, that season of that relationship ended and then I took a long break from dating. Nine years actually, y'all. And in that nine years, I gave my life to Christ and I just ate and devoured the word. I did. Um, and then my third major relationship was uh, Mr. Superfox. And as you all know, um, that relationship, that season has ended as well. But um, it was, again, a thought, perhaps a discussion, but not a real desire so I don't regret not having more children. No, I don't. I really don't. So that's my honest answer. Um, Audrey asks, Tanya, will you ever go back to working from your company's offices or will you permanently work from home? I left my job after 23 years because the transition to working from home was too great to make. Um Yes, we are permanently remote. Um, because I am a manager, I still do have to attend office staff meetings, um, team building, uh, and that type of stuff, and some training, um, stuff like that. So, um, but right now, permanently, I'm a remote worker. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, a. Lewis ask a question. She says, good morning, Lady Time, Lady T. You, uh, you have a beautiful soul. I love your positive spiritual and motivational videos. You always give good common sense information. My questions would be when it comes to YouTube with filming, editing, etc., would you consider it to be hard and time consuming? Also, if you could sit down and talk with anyone who would it be and why? And aside from your corporate job and YouTube, what other things would you like to try, do, or achieve? Congratulations on your weight loss journey. You're inspiring me to do better and run my own race. Can't wait for the Q&A. Okay. Okay. Great questions, A. Lewis. Um, when it comes to YouTube, I... Actually, let me just say this. I film slash record, edit, and upload on my this one device that I'm on my phone. That part is easy. Um, editing, I like editing because my brain is very analytical and I like details and digging into things. It is a job. It's time and it is time consuming. You have, I have found ways to fit it into my life. After I've worked all day uh, in the evening as I'm winding down, that's part of, uh, of my uh, wind down is 
I have all the clips that I've done throughout the day on my breaks or whatever, and I merge them all together. And I have a very simplistic editor. I use Velo Editor, V-L-L-O. And it's, it keeps it very simple. And it's something that I, it's not too technical, but it's technical enough that it feeds that detail -y part of me. Um, but it can be time consuming. It really can. Um, because I do like to jaw jack and I like to share and I like to uh, know that I'm doing some type of ministry to uh, uh, to just make people laugh, smile, think on things. And again, about the word of God. I love that. But yes, it can be very time consuming just depending on what you're doing. Um, but again, it's a discipline thing. It's something that you just have to learn how to incorporate into your life. Um, so for that, yes, it is, can be time consuming. I don't, I won't look at it as it being hard, um, because you're your own manager. You work, it's, you're working pretty much for yourself. You set your, what I like about it though, is that you set your own tone. You film who you want to film. Uh, you discuss what you want to say. You control the output of things. That's the great part about this job. It really, truly is. Um, so time consuming, yes. Is it a job? Yes. Um, but again, you have to, you know your lifestyle. A person should know their lifestyle to say, okay, between six and six, seven that's my YouTube editing, getting the video uploaded, zoom, zoom, wham, wham, doing what I got to do on to the next day. Okay. So you fit that into your lifestyle however you need to do it. Um, and then the next question says, if you could sit down and talk with anyone, who would it be and why? And aside from, okay, so I'll answer that question. If I could sit down and talk with someone you know who I would love to sit down and just have a good old talk with is Oprah Winfrey. I just do. Oprah Winfrey and let's see for a male. You know what? Honestly, I think I would love to sit down and talk with Langston Hughes. I think he has a brilliant mind. I love, as a woman, I love poetry. Just very renaissance-y. And I, I really would love to sit down and talk with him. Now, I've thought about this question too in the sense of, you know, if I had a chance, sometimes, you know, we... We want to sit down and talk to people that we are just in awe of all the time. But you know what? I would really love to sit down and talk with certain people so that I can get a better understanding about something concerning them or people who have, have really done things that have changed the trajectory of policy that really made a change that maybe I don't quite understand why they did it because I don't see the fruit of it was beneficial for majority. But I've always been interested. If I if truly, truly, if I had an opportunity, I would love to sit down Y'all ready for this? I would love to sit down and have a one-on-one, -on -one, not a banter or a battle. Just maybe just, you know how you have little questions in the side of your brain. You're like, you know, why, why did you do that? The, okay, the cameras ain't on us. Our constituents ain't on us. Why did you do that or say that or go with that? I, I just would love to know. Y'all ready? Newt Gingrich. I would love to sit down and talk with Newt Gingrich. I really would. 
and I got my own personal zoom zooms and wham wins. But I really, because I'm the type of person, in order for you to understand and learn about something, I'm telling you, something has bit me. Um, yeah. So that's that's that, those are the people. And you know what? Honestly, too, I would love to sit down and talk with Kate Arthur. When I tell you that woman knows how to teach that word of God. Oh, yeah. I would love to have a one on one with her. Oh, just everybody move out of the way. She's not doing a seminar with none of y'all today. I just want to talk to Kate Arthur. Love her. Love her. But yeah. OK, so. That answers those questions there okay now where are we at where are we at okay okay here we go lily lily asks hey tanya what is your favorite food i love you no excuse me i love how you and your family always make time for each other and come see each other every weekend you have an incredible family well thank you lily my favorite food uh, used to be pizza. I do like pizza, but I have had to reprogram my brain of not making it my favorite food anymore. Um, my favorite food now, honestly, I know I said all strawberries and scrambled eggs. <laughs> strawberries and scrambled eggs are my favorite food. I'm telling you, on days when I don't want to be slaving in the kitchen, and when I say slaving in the kitchen, I'm talking about anything that takes me more than 30 minutes to make. Two scrambled eggs and me some John Brown strawberries. That's my jush. Y'all, y'all, that's my jush. I know, very boring, but I love it, and it's good for my body. Um... So yeah, that that's my juice now, y'all. Cheese eggs and me some John Brown strawberries. Love it. Um, let's see. Geneva Marilyn Matt asks, "Hi Tanya, I always see you and Tony hanging out together, but you and your sister hang out because I used to see her over at your mom's house. I haven't seen or heard you say anything about her. I love your content." And whenever I can watch you on YouTube. Okay. Geneva. Uh, yes, I do see my sister, but not as much as I see Tony. Cause of course me and Tony work out every day. Um, but right now Tony's going through physical therapy cause y'all know he su suffered a heart attack for those of you who know this. Um, but yeah, uh, I, uh, I don't see her as much as Tony because Tansy works out of town a lot in her medical field. And so when she comes home, she's in the bed and then she's back out doing her business. So, um, yeah, she just, you know, whenever she's over at my mom's house, there's sometimes I pull out the camera and she's, you know, cause sometimes I stop doing over my mom house during the week and I just go dash in and dash out and Tansy may be over there and we will jaw jack and talk real quick or whatever. But uh, Tansy lives a very, very busy lifestyle, and she's away from home a lot. So, yeah. And she's one of my, and I think I just said it. She's one of, if I didn't say it, she's one of the family members on, that don't like a camera in her face. You know, I'm her sister. She loves me. She When she talking, a lot of times, we have to discuss family stuff, you know, and it's just, you know, I don't cut the camera on. Y'all wouldn't be able to handle it if I recorded everything couldn't handle it so again everything's not for public consumption but i understand the question okay let's see one blessed mommy asked hey hey miss tanya how do you stay motivated to work out and eat healthy what exercises have benefited you the most what are some of your go-to foods well number one what keeps me motivated is when i, I got that ugly uh report from my daughter last year and said, yeah, Miss Howard, you're in a little trouble here. Um, that's a motivator. Second motivator is my age. Um, when you see stuff around you and you hear the Holy Spirit saying, all right now, 
You got to do something about this. Then you see other things going on in your family health wise. And you say, okay, girl. You keep on playing around with it. So I just made up in my mind that Tanya. You're getting older. Can't eat like this. Girl, you're getting older. Your knee is swole and aching today. Your hip. You, you can't get but so many of them shots. So I had to begin to listen to my body and say, girl, it ain't cute to have over 100 pounds of weight on your body that shouldn't be there. You need to do something about it now while you're still younger. Because the older you get, the harder it's going to get. So what keeps me motivated is when I went to my doctor and they showed me what food does to your body when you misuse it and when you don't eat the right things. It may not be what your mouth want to taste. Just like some people say, oh, I hate water, I hate water. It may not be what your, your mouth want to taste, but your body needs that water. You may not want to eat that broccoli, but your body needs that broccoli because of all the agents in nutrition of value that's in those things. And once you read for yourself with your doctor by your side and that dietitian nutrition, and they say, listen, stop listening to what folks say, because that might be what they doctor told them to stay away from. That See, those are the things that keep me motivated because I have to run my own race. And my doctors are looking at my blood and my test results and telling you, uh, they, that person might was told not to eat grapefruit because great, they're on blood pressure medicine and grapefruit in by nature lowers your blood pressure. So yeah, you don't want to be eating grapefruit if you're on blood pressure medicine because the medicine along with the grapefruit can drop your bottom to uh, blood pressure too low. You follow what I'm saying? But for you, since you're, you don't have blood pressure issues, you can eat grapefruit because you don't have low blood pressure. So any amount of grapefruit you eat is not going to bottom your pressure. Out. You follow what I'm saying? So the very thing people tell you that they doctor told them not to eat or use is because they're looking at that person's trot. That's why when you hear people say and you hear doctors, people say, hey, before you start a weight loss program, get with your doctor. Because your doctor has to tell you what's specific going on with you. You might be telling people, oh, you know, my doctor told me to stay away from that. Well, that might be a deficiency that person actually needs. They may need to eat strawberries. They may need to eat blueberries. They may need to eat that grapefruit. They may need to eat that watermelon because of all those nutrient things. Oh, the doctor said, don't, my doctor told me not to eat carrots because it's full of sugar. Well, carrots, and that person that you're telling you, they might have bad eyesight that carrots can help. That carrot has an a ingredient in it that helps with eyesight. So I'm just saying, everything ain't the boogeyman. And if you learn how to read for yourself, that's what motivates me. When I have gotten there and I have read it for myself, I could be having problems and deficiencies with acid reflux. And found out all I needed to do was eat more, put more of this on my diet. And, and your body will get rid of it naturally versus taking, what's that stuff called? Zyrtex and, or whatever, what is it called? Nexium, Prolisac. I'm just saying. But if we don't know that because we're going by what Sheila said because she got high blood pressure. Because Sheila got sugar diabetes. She telling you all this stuff her doctor's telling her to stay away from. Well, when I eat those things or somebody else, eat it, their body, they're very active. So their body is metabolizing it differently and burning it off. Whereas you are sitting and eat a whole cake and don't ever exercise. See, 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 see. That's why your doctor told you to stay away from that kind of stuff. Because your body is at a point to where it's in bad shape. So I'm very cautious about me putting out there. Because see, I used to be hurt. I used to go to all of these different channels. Y'all remember, I tried the vegan deal and the plant-based. And for the most part, yeah, it's, it seems healthy. 
but I was replacing all those meats with carbs and I was blowing up. So it, it, it wasn't working for me and it wasn't showing any results in my blood work. Now it may show wonderful results in somebody else's blood work based on what might be going on in their body. So what keeps me motivated is staying, running my race and staying focused on what I know I need to eat because I, 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 I just post stuff up here daily. Oh, okay. Today I'm eating such and such soup. Well, honey, I'll have 10 comments. And, oh, I can't eat mushroom. Ooh, oh, I don't like onions. And I'm so for me, I'm not putting it up here per se for you to copy what I do. Because a lot of what is okay for me and works and benefits me may not benefit your body. May not because of whatever you got going on. It could be genetically. It could be because you're on a particular medicat. That's why they say go sit down. And I, the best. Let me tell y'all something. The best advice I can give y'all, and the only advice I can give y'all, go sit down with your daughter. Pay for, invest in yourself and pay for, find out if you, even if your insurance company may even cover it for you to go see a dietitian and a nutritionist. So certain things are just free because you have that insurance. You can go see them, a dietitian and nutrition one or two times a year at no cost. You ain't got to pay a copay. And again, that's something that you just need to check out. Okay. Sit down with those people because you, when you, when your primary doctor uh, refers you out to a dietitian or nutritionist, you sign the uh, paperwork to release your medical information to them so that they also can see. Okay, this is where this person is. This is what they need to be. Da da da. So they're looking at your stuff, all your get down going on with you, so they can tell you. Okay. Based on where you are with your sugar, whether it's your cholesterol, blood pressure, you got pro, you know, gut issue, all that. They can tell you exactly what you need to be eating, what you need to be staying away from. But that ain't for you to go to tell somebody else. Well, mm -mm, my doctor told me don't. You need to stay away from that. No, no, no. Your doc, that, that your doctor told you what you need to stay away from. Now. If Sheila go to her daughter and, she, and her daughter tell her the same thing that your daughter told you, because maybe what she has is something similar to you. But I'm just telling y'all, this is something that I learned and it's very, very important. What keeps me motivated is remembering and investing in Tanya and writing down notes that says, Tanya, look at what eating a bell pepper with a light seasoning on it or some light balsamic vinegar, because if you just want flavor, eat that instead of potato chips. Look at the dip. Look at what the potato. You can eat seven or eight chips and it's about 40 carbs and 90 calories. Now, who's going to eat seven or eight chips versus if you're looking for a crunch, yeah, your tongue ain't gonna like perhaps it not tasting like a potato. But guess what? If you're looking for a crunch, and whatever your crunch is, whether it be a cucumber, a bell pepper, a sweet pepper, whatever in the vegetable, it could be celery, it could be a broccoli. What find that, drizzle a little light olive oil, a little vinegar, salt, pepper. Do it moving so you have so it won't be that bland taste, but you're getting that nutrient from that vegetable. And look at what that vegetable does to your body when it gets in your body. That's what motivates me. And I'm running my own race. I ain't trying to keep up with Lisa and none of those. For, I'm running my own race. Every day I get up and I'm motivated to say, Tanya, today make the choice that you know is going to benefit your body. And when you start to read what certain things do, certain fruits, certain vegetables, certain proteins. When you see the benefit 
of what it does and you just do it every day. I'm telling you from the time I started with this weight loss journey to now, I am almost 60 pounds lighter. Think about that. And when you just read, what keeps you motivated? Read what happens to your body when you lose 15 pounds. Just read. And, and that is motivating. Look at what happens when you are on your trajectory and you lose five pounds. Five, I ain't talking about water weight. I'm talking about real weight loss. Look at what it does to your body, to your joints. So when you get into that space, now for me, my space target weight, I should be at the heaviest 155 for my age and my height. So for me, I still have another 55 more pounds to go in actuality. I know my goal is 90. And, you know, again, my doctor said a lot of people fluctuate 15 pounds. So I still have another 55 pounds to lose, even after being almost at a pound and a half away from 60 pounds lost. So... From that day to this day, I'm still looking at my same body. I can tell I've lost weight. My clothes, the evidence of it there, that's what motivates me. But I recognize I still got the same amount more to lose. And guess what? When I get there, so that is what keeps me motivated. Me reading my test results, me looking at the benefits of what Choices I'm making and I'm seeing the manifestation of it, but I'm also looking at, look at what I'm helping my body to do so I can function and so that my latter years are going to be greater than my former years. I'm, I'm making a choice. I'm motivating myself to stay motivated because Tanya, if you want to line up with the word of God, when it says your latter years will be greater than your former, then Tanya, you got to stay focused and motivated so that you line up with the will of God for your life. He, God said, I want you to be in good health. And while you're in good health, I want you to prosper. I want you to prosper and be in good health. But Tanya, in order for you to do that, you got to be motivated every day to make a choice. Choose you this day whom you're going to serve. You're going to serve man or serve God. And how I serve God is being a good steward over this body. Oh, my God. I'm just telling you. Now, that's me. That's what keeps me motivated. And that's what I, what I have to do because I know the word of God does ne never leads me astray. It leads me to all truth. So the truth of the matter, you have to find something in your life that you have to say, I'm going to be motivated. My motivation, honestly, like I've told you all, hashtag, I'm, I want to get off medicine. I want to be off medicine. So my motivation, in order for me to get off medicine, it comes with making the right choices to eat right, getting up and exercising every day. That's going to have to be something you do for the rest of your life. Tanya, I see in my neighborhood, older people walk all throughout the day. Most of them get up early in the morning. I'm sitting here working at eight o'clock in the morning. I see a bunch of older people walking up. They're walking their dogs. Or they're, they're just up and moving. They get out there. Now that it's summertime, they get out before it's um too hot. And they're 80, year old, 80 plus year old people out walking. My neighbor. She's 73. She gets up every day and walks her dog. They're doing something. So my God, my master, I gotta be, I gotta be motivated. In the evening time, I see folk after a certain 6:30 in 7 o'clock, 7:30 now that it gets later, it gets darker later in the night. I see those people out there walking their dogs because they've done ate their dinner and they get on up after dinner and they out here walking. They're motivated. So again, those are the things that keep me motivated. Sometimes I see people out there walking. I might be sitting out here on my porch. I don't work out during the day in the morning. 
And I get so motivated. I see them people out here walking 7.30, 8 o'clock at night. I might step out there on my porch and catch a little evening breeze. Oh, my God. It'll make me come back in here sometime. I'll get on my walk pad and walk up here for about 10 minutes. Just, again, staying motivated. Again, encouraging myself. Sometimes you have to encourage yourself. You got to do it. So that's what keeps me motivated. And what exercises that have that benefited me the most? Um, On that treadmill. The treadmill has benefited me the most. Of course, I do my lifting you know, I always do three sets of 15 of whatever I'm doing. Arm lift, leg lifts, buttocks. Um, I do crunches on the crunch machine. I do them three sets of 15. And sometimes I do three sets of 20. Those have been helping me the most. The treadmill, the cardio, and the crunch machines. And then, you know, whatever machines I put in rotation when I'm doing targeted areas, but the treadmill and the crunch machine, those have benefited me the most. But again, what really benefits me the most, it's not so much the different machines or exercises, it's consistency. Well, please hear me. Consistency. Okay. So thank you for those questions. Um, again, what are my go-to foods? Um, my fruits and my vegetables, my fruits and vegetables. I have really started a liking, taking a liking to broccoli because now I don't put butter on the broccoli. What I have learned to do, I've learned how to steam my broccoli and I just douse, douse it with a little bit of um, low sodium chicken stock. And then I'll slightly uh, put sea salt on it. Or that Himalayan pink salt. Y'all saw it, see me use that. I'll sprinkle a little bit of that with onion powder. Y'all know onion powder is my get down. And that is stuff that... And now, like I said, how you can use vinegar and lemon. Uh, cat, I, I uh, chop up cabbage. Matter of fact, I got a cat. I'll show y'all how to do that. Cabbage. Chop it up. Finely chop it up. Salt, pepper, onion powder vinegar, little lime juice, let it marinate. And maybe one packet of stevia, put it in, keep your jars marinated. I keep all my pickle juice, marinate that in there. And that is an awesome snack. Just, I mean, again, and you get all those nutrients from that raw cabbage. And then on with broccoli, I'm just telling you, I've just renewed my mind. I, I again, I do what I know is nutrition. What is nutrition is for my body. And I don't, I'm not looking at it to be something that is a comfort. It's comforting me. I really look at food now. Not saying that I don't, don't get me wrong. I still enjoy flavor and you're always going to like what you like. But when it comes to eating, I eat for the nutritional value that it does to my body. I really have had to reprogram my brain to stop eating food so it comforts me. And I feel that euphoric high and climax. I don't eat food like that anymore. That was my, that's the old Tanya. Not saying I don't think about certain things. I might even have a craving for some things every once in a while. But because I have learned how to eat in that eight hour window between two, 12. I cut my eating off really normally by 7 p.m. I'm not eating mm -mm, mm -mm. because I know what it does to the body. Again, I've educated myself. I know what it does to the body. So I have learned how to cut it off. I try to eat between that 12 and 7 or sometimes I'll eat lunch early around 11 in the eight hour window and I fast to the next day to 12 o'clock. I have had to discipline myself and I, now it's not, it's, it's not even a big thing because I've acted. And I know, like I said, as I've gotten older, I've had to learn. I, I can't eat the way I was eating. It's not good. It's not good to have a hundred pounds of weight, extra weight on your 
body. You, you, I mean, you, we just don't know the habit. It overworks our organs. It overworks our heart. I want my body to be able to function at its most pinnacle. And having a hundred pounds until I lose this other 55, I, you know, like I said, my goal was 90, but I was actually 115 pounds overweight. My weight should be 155 at the max for my age and for my height. So, and, and for a female. So, the goal is 90, but I know I still need to lose another 15. So, I'm just going to say I need to lose another 55 pounds. So, it is what it is. So, I'm being very serious about that. I'm very passionate about that. I really am. So, fruits and vegetables are my go-to food. Okay, let me move on through these questions, y'all. Okay, it says, uh, TiVo711. Hey, Tanya, love your energy. My question, can you please give us a week, a week meal plan sampler and how many calories you did to lose weight? You look amazing. Honestly, y'all, I'm not really counting calories. I am, again eating based on nutritional value. I, like I said, I got with my dietitian and nutritionist and I'm really looking at what fruits and vegetables line up based on what's going on with me and based on what is going on with my health and maximizing eating those things that bring me to where I need to be and cultivating that in my lifestyle. Because like I said, I have shared things on my channel and you've got some people that say, oh yes, I can do that. Or yes, I eat that too. Or you got some people that say, you know what girl, I tried that, I can't eat this. And they, and they go through the gambit of what they can't eat. Oh, I can't believe you eat low carb, but you eating that bacon. Guess what? My my um, cholesterol is fine. All those things are fine. My I don't have an issue. I have other issues, but that that ain't one. So I, I I get what you're saying, but that might be not good for you. Uh, if you can't eat pork because it shoots your blood pressure through the roof or gives you a headache, then don't eat it. C C C C. And that's why I say I, I get very sensitive about giving people exactly what I do and what I eat. I'm gonna be honest with you. I get up every morning, every day, knowing that I normally am not going to eat anything till around 11, 12 o'clock every day. I've acclimated my body to that. I might do when I some some mornings or, or some, when it's time for me to eat. Because when I go get up and go to the gym, I get up, I have my glass of water with lemon in it. I get up, I go to the gym, I work out. I drink some more water after I work out. I get home, shower, have me a cup of coffee. I've, I've done all that between the hours of 6 and 8 o'clock every morning. Then at lunchtime, I might do me a cucumber, cherry tomato. I might roll me, I might have had cooked me some uh, chicken, cut me up a piece of, of chicken breast, and that's my lunch. And I'll drizzle a little Evie, olive oil and um, vinegar on, on it, on the vegetables. And that, because I know the nutritional value it does for my body based on what's going on with me. Then, during the day, later on in the day, I might have a snack where I eat an orange, some strawberries. I might even scramble me a couple of eggs later on in the afternoon for snack. Those see, those are the things that I do. I I eat things that I know has nutritional value. Or I might cut me up, or like I was saying earlier, eat some of that chopped up uh, cabbage in that uh, grind in that brine. Or I will um, eat a banana. Then for dinner, I might do me a, a bowl of that uh, brothy soup vegetable soup, just whatever. Every day it changes because every day I might have a taste or I might say, okay, I need to incorporate some blueberries. So I might do a protein shake for lunch. It just depends. It just depends. And so when I am creating content 
as a content creator, I have to be careful what I say you should do. I can just say, hey, this is what I ate today and put it out there. But I'm not going to say, okay, now this is what I did to lose weight. Well, that's obvious, but I have to be careful putting that out there because I'm just telling you, they put such a burden on content creators and what we say out of our mouths because somebody might do it and they have an adverse effect to it because it didn't work for them. Now, keep in mind, I don't been to my doctor and, and, and been told because it's in me now. I know what I can have, what I can, you know, what works for me. I know what I've been told to stay away from based on what's going on with my body. So if I get out here and start telling people, yeah, well, you need to eat this and you eat this and eat it, you know, eat it. some people can say, well, you know what? I have to take my medicine in the morning and I have to eat something with it. Well, see, what I do is not going to work for you. What I have talked to and my doctor has approved me to do based on the medications I'm on and based on the medications I'm trying to get off of, I'm trying to do self-correcting changing and healing so I can get off this stuff. And I've been given the instructions on what to do to make that happen and be able to live that lifestyle from here on out so I don't have to get back on it. See, each one of us have different genetic makeup and what's going on in your family line ain't got nothing to do with what's going on with mine. So again, that's why, again, I must say, please consult your daughter. You are a co-laborer with your own health and you have to really get in there and do your own homework. I'm just being, I'm just being straight up. It's no silver bullet, magic book. You have to really get in there and do your own homework. Because if I tell you, just like with me, some people looked at me crazy when I said, you know what? I love watermelon. I can eat watermelon for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I've done that. And people say, girl, you crazy. All that sugar. Ain't you been going to the bathroom all day? No. No. Now, I do to go to the bathroom because, of course, 80% of watermelon is, 90% uh, of watermelon is water. But my body is also burning it. Based on my body now knows, oh, she's going to get up and go work out. She's going to burn about 400 calories in the gym. I burn, when I'm on the treadmill, I, I start off with the treadmill and I end with the treadmill. After I've done all my working out, I do about 30 minutes to 35 minutes on the treadmill. I do 30 minutes and then I'll do like a five minute cool down. Then I'll do about 45 minutes of just gym work. Then the last 15 minutes before I get ready to leave, I do 15 more minutes on the treadmill. Right? So within that whole 45 minutes, just me doing that on the treadmill, I burn like 250 calories. Then I think about all the other stuff and I burn another 200 calories doing the other exercises collectively. So I burn anywhere between 350 to 400 calories per day in the gym just from exercising. So again, you know, again, that's, and, and there's some people, they get, folks, some folks get on the tre treadmill and run for 45 minutes and they can burn, they, they burn anywhere from 800 to 1200. There's a lady that goes, she gets on that treadmill every morning and she runs for about 45 minutes on that treadmill at, you know, speed six or seven. But she has conditioned her body to do that. And I have, you know, been standing right next to her when she's ended her, uh, her treadmill run and it say 9,000 calories. It just depends. She might be on the incline. She might have, you know, the speed a little bit higher than normal. So people, you know, you can burn and she, she can, she burns that in 45 minutes, but she has conditioned her body to do that. Now she might be a person that eats a lot of calories because she knows she's going to burn off mostly what she eats in the gym so she needs those calories so she can keep up that type of stamina but for me yeah i i know that i'm gonna burn anywhere from 350 to 400 calories per day in the gym 
So when I'm on my walk pad here at home on days that I don't uh, burn, uh, go to the gym, I know that I burn at least 100 calories when I just walk on this treadmill at the speed that I walk on it for 20 minutes. I burn 100 calories. So, and like I said, and I do that throughout the day. So even though I'm consuming calories and I burnt 400 calories, you know, in the, that morning, I'm still burning another one or 200 calories throughout the day, just getting on the treadmill throughout the day in 10 or 15 increments, two times a day. So you just have to, again, you have to create your lifestyle. But again, I'm going to be a little bit leery of giving people exactly what I eat because I have to eat. And again, I have to protect my mental. Uh, and I don't want to know that I'm giving somebody something and they harm themselves because they, they see my results and they say, oh, well, she's doing it. It's got to work for me. I'm just telling you, I had to get off that yo-yo of doing that myself. And I could see... I want to have that knowledge and keep that knowledge and retain that knowledge for me because down the line, let's say in 20 years, what I'm doing now in 20 years may not work. But as I grow into my life and the, how my body changes, if something else changes 20, down, year, 20 years down the road and I got to go back. Let's say I, you know, at 70, I'm looking at a whole nother situation. My daughter said, okay, based on this, you need to eat stuff with more vitamin D because your bones are getting frail just because of age. So my whole diet may have to change. And that's why when I, as I'm getting older, I know I can't carry all this kind of weight because I would be, it would be detriment to my bones and bone structure. So I'm just saying, so again, I'll think about it, but I'm, the way I present it is going to have to be very abstract again, because of us being content creators, you know, a lot of content creators get sued, uh, because they, they, they sell these meal plans and, um, for weight loss. And then, uh, it, it, it worked for 10% of the people, but the other 80%, it didn't work for them. They gained weight. Because I'm here to tell you. Because I was going off of what somebody else said. And I, I'm not blaming anybody. Because I recognize, okay, Tanya, this is something that you were doing for you. But when I sat down and finally talked to my specialist, she said, mm -mm. that's not going to work for you right now because of the medicine that you're on. And that's why you were gaining so much weight when you tried to go down that path. Even though that person might have been a specialist in a certified nutritionist for you. That's why they, they'll even tell you. Professionals who are certified, they will tell you, before you do anything, go speak to your daughter. So again, I don't need I don't I don't need that on my heart that I led somebody to eat this and mm -mm, mm -mm, no. So again, I'll think about it. Y'all, are we going to have a part three? Let me move on to these other questions. Y'all know I can jaw jack. Um, so yes, good question, TiVo. Uh, Samuel Gills, greetings from Australia, Miss Tiny. If someone narrated your life, who would you want to do it? Oh, wow. That is a great question. If someone narrated your life, who would you want to do it? Ooh. Honestly. I I think I honestly y'all, I think I would want my son to narrate my life. Although He's not been there every because he's he's living his life. He's doing his. Life. I would if if we're talking about chapters, I would love for him to narrate. Because I would love to. Hear his truthful. 
Perspective. Wow, that's an excellent question. You know, you could say your parents or my mama because, I mean, heck, she narrates my life every day. She sees me, don't she? <laughs> don't your parents, don't care, don't matter how old you get, your parents are going to narrate your life. They're going to tell you about yourself every day of your life, right? You hear Naomi trying to come out. Yeah, I would really like to get my son's perspective because, you know, as children, we always, or we should always, especially if you've had a good upbringing. I understand just like earlier in the questionnaire, some people didn't have a good relationship with their parents and I understand and get that. But, um, I would like to have his perspective, honestly. Yeah, that was a great question, Samuel. I think I would like for my son, either my son or my granddaughter. He, you know, he can do the first part of his life up until he, you know, I quote unquote left out of my nest and, you know, our current interactions and then maybe my granddaughter. I would. I would like to have their perspective. Hmm. Great. Great question. Hmm. Okay. Becca Bangs says, hey, Miss Lady T, by the way, love you. I really adopted you as my auntie. You just don't know that but my question to you is well i'm 29 now but for most of my 20s i can definitely say i procrastinated a lot with life and fell off track so many times due to depression of my mother passing away and falling victim to alcohol abuse recently i have been starting to make change in life but i still hear voices of doubt and shame of feeling like I wasted so much time. Did you ever have a time in life where you fell short and what advice would you give someone like me? I need all the advice I can get. Love you. Great question, Becca. And yes, I was a bad decision maker financially in my 20s. Oh, when I tell you I blew some money, money I didn't have, money I thought I had, money I thought I was going to get. I blew it. And I didn't make good decisions. Um, I made a lot of mistakes. Um, and the best thing I can tell you, I know you're saying that you're, you know, you're 29 now. The best advice I could give you, and you said your mother passed. Mm. Becca, you're going to have to forgive yourself. You're going to have to sit yourself down and say, Becca, I forgive you. Because when I was making, I, I mean, I'll just go back to when I was 16 and I was found myself pregnant and having a child. That that was a, it happened. I'm so glad and I love my, my, my son, of course. And he's given me two beautiful granddaughters. But back then, that 16 year old. I thought, oh my God, I have made the worst mistake of my life. Look at what you've done in your life. The embarrassment, the shame, the shame that I put on my parents, the embarrassment. But eventually I had to forgive myself and say, girl, you're here. He's here. What are you going to do? You're going to just roll over? And not press and be to your child what you know you should be. And I say this to anybody too. Hurt is hurt. I don't care who it comes from, how it developed, how it was cultivated. The best thing you can do, again, this is where I was saying, going back to the part of 
being the biggest influence. You be your biggest influence. Let your mother, Becca, be your biggest influence to say, you know what? I see what caused her demise. I'm going to do my best to make the best out of what I know got her and snarled, easily beset her and caused her to no longer be with us. I'm going to make sure that I don't do things that will easily beset me. I want to break that chain. I want to break that curse, if you will, so it doesn't jump on me. Those are the things you have to say to yourself to influence yourself not to go down a certain path. And it's not going to be easy, but you got to make a choice. You got to make a choice and say, you know what? I forgive myself. I have forgiven myself. Every day I'm going to get up and make the best decision that steers me away from those things that will cause me self-infliction, self-destruction. Every day I'm going to make a decision. So my advice to you is forgive yourself. Don't keep beating yourself up. Continue to love your mother, no matter what it was that uh, caused whatever to occur in her life. Love her in your spirit to say, you know what, Ma? I don't know everything that was going on with you that caused this to happen. I don't know every intricate little detail, but I love you, Mama. I forgive you, mama, and then you have to forgive yourself. You have to forgive. You have to forgive yourself. When listen, I know some people when they find out, I'm look, I'm 51, and there are people that that have not followed me. New people come to onto my channel all the time. And if they hear me say things about me being a having a teenage uh a pregnancy as a teenager. And what people want to do, they want to try to take you back. You can't take me back to 16. Because truly God has delivered. I've forgiven myself. My son is here. I've got two grandchildren. And guess what? All those things that I made a mistake on, God has restored. Just like with me. I felt like, oh, I should have been further along. Why did I mess up when I was in my 20s? I could have been further along. Maybe... I would have had a house that would have been paid for and I wouldn't have to deal with it more. Listen, I look at it like this. It's almost like when you look back over your life and you say, well, my God in heaven, I'm so glad you didn't give me that house back then because I probably would have jacked it up. I probably would have jacked it up to the point to where I wouldn't have had good enough credit now where I could, I walked into this house turnkey ready and didn't have to put a dime down on it. See, 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 see. When you... Look back. The only time you be looking back is so you can see how God, far God has brought you from. So anything that you know, hey, we'll call a spade a spade, a mistake. Uh, you made a choice that jacked you up financially. Whatever the case may be, forgive yourself and say self. Turn from doing that because you know what road it's going to lead down to. You know what road it lead down for my mama, my grandmama, whoever else it affected. And maybe it just affected your mother. I know what it will do. I have the propensity that it may affect me this way. So I'm going to make decisions that keeps me from going down that path. And you just have to make a, 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 a decision And speak it over yourself. Speak it over yourself and say, uh-uh, I will not. I will live and not die. I will live and not die. I will persevere. If you got to get up and speak before the world has the opportunity to touch you, speak life over your life. Because death and life is in the power of your tongue. Again, like I was saying in part one, I invest 
all in myself all day, but specifically first thing in the morning before I have the opportunity for the world to turn. Two hours is what I invest in myself so I can prosper and be in good health. I am on a road to restore my health. I want to restore what the canker worm, the palmer worm has taken from me. And same way with you, Becca, you're going to have to forgive yourself. So once you forgive yourself, you can go and press toward that mark. And whatever that mark is, get you a notebook pad out and write down whatever that mark is. Today, I'm going to be happy today. Today, I'm going to have the power to make the best decision that's conducive for my life. Because I'm running my own race. That's my, that's my advice I can give you. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. All right. Okay. Brandy L. asked, yes, the Jesus fish ring you recently brought, where can I get one? Thank you. And I love your videos uh, and Bible studies. You make me laugh so much, Miss Tanya. Okay. Brandy L. Okay. This fish ring here. I did a video on my channel, and the name of the jeweler is Buddy's Jewelers. Um, you can go online. Um, it's a couple of cities over from where I live. And uh, you just go online, and uh, or either you can call or whatever, and ask them about this fish ring. It's under Christian... I can't remember right off. If When I put this up, if I... Um, Pull up that video and I can tell you who it's by because certain jewelers use um, different companies to make their jewelry or to send it to them. And then they have an in-house jewel jeweler that can size your ring if you need it to be sized up or down or whatever. Um, but yeah, Buddy's Jewelers, B-U-D-D-Y apostrophe S Jewelers, Jewelry. Okay, that's where I got it from. I think that's all the questions. I think I got them in. That was the last question. So again, y'all, I truly enjoyed answering these questions for you. Like I said, this is going to be a part, maybe a part one, part two, part three, because that way it can be broke up and you all can just watch it at leisure. But I thank you so much for your questions. Um, I know I can be long-winded, but you know, sometimes this is how you get uh, better insight on things, right? So anyway... I'm getting ready to uh, close myself in for the evening, but I so appreciate your questions. I'll open it up maybe later on in the year and we'll do another Q&A. But I love y'all. I thank y'all so much for your support. Please, if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel and give this video and these videos in this series a thumbs up. And I would appreciate it. Okay, again, thank you all for your questions. I love you. God bless. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Bye, y'all.